right, good morning everybody. My name is Carrie Nielsen and I'm a registered dietitian with Boys Town Pediatrics. And today I'm here to talk with you about a topic that is very important at this time in your life and that's nutrition needs during pregnancy and breastfeeding. So first we'll start with pregnancy, since pregnancy comes first and just what your special needs are during this time. So the question that people always wonder is, I must be eating for two, but that's actually a really good question to ask. So do you need to double every single thing that you're eating and drinking? Well, not exactly. There's actually some recommended um, calorie amounts for each day and weight gain for each um, part of the pregnancy, also based on where you are before you got pregnant. So the weight gain that we recommend is anywhere from 11 to 20 pounds up to 28 to 40 pounds. Generally three and a half pounds during that first trimester is, is what we recommend. So that doesn't equate to doubling everything that you eat. And then one week or one pound per week um, thereafter throughout the remainder of the pregnancy. So this, this chart right here just kind of shows the what we call a trajectory of what we would expect for weight gain. So you can see in each of the categories for normal weight women, underweight women, and overweight women, it's very slow in the beginning. And then the, the, um, the curve is quite steep after that, accounting for that one extra pound per week of weight gain during the remainder. So where does this weight gain actually come from? Like where, where do those pounds go? This just shows an average of what a 30 pound weight gain would be during pregnancy. So it's everything from a couple pound extra increase in breast size, four pounds increase in your fluid volume, one and a half pounds for the placenta, four pounds for the increase in blood supply to the placenta, two pounds for amniotic fluid, an average seven and a half pounds for the infant size at birth, um, two pounds for the increase in size of the uterus as well as the muscles supporting that. And then seven pounds average for the mother's necessary fat stores, which will come in handy um, after baby is born. So that's just kind of what the average of what 30 pounds would look like. And, and that's going to vary a little bit person to person, depending on your own um, individual gains and your um, family history in that regards is, but that's kind of where those, where those pounds come from. It's not just the baby, it's all the other supporting um, tissues and, and so forth. So nutrition during pregnancy. The things that you can control during your pregnancy are the, the things that you fuel your body with. So the things that, that I like to discuss here include, you wanna strive for good nutrition and health prior to pregnancy. If, if you're at an, an age or um, something that you're planning on, you wanna to try to have good nutrition before and make sure that it, the prenatal care is in place during pregnancy. You wanna gain a healthy amount of weight that we just discussed back there, not too much and not too little. You wanna make sure that you eat a balanced diet safely prepared uh, and that's because women during pregnancy actually have a higher chance of developing a foodborne illness compared to any other population. Um, just, they just simply do. And also physical activity. So we'll talk more about the balanced diet and the physical activity here in just a moment. You also want to make sure that you're taking a prenatal vitamin and mineral supplement as prescribed and that's pretty standard across the board even if you do have a well-balanced diet just to kind of cover those bases during pregnancy. And then refrain um, from things that we know are not, um, not good to do during pregnancy, such as cigarettes, alcohol, and drugs. So here's what your energy and nutrient needs will look like during pregnancy. So during the first trimester, you really don't need any additional calories per day. And some people may not even be aware that, um, that they're pregnant during that first trimester. Um, so really, there's no additional needs because the growth is so um, small at that time. It's not till the third, uh, second and third trimesters that you really increase your calorie needs. So 340 extra calories a day during the second trimester and 450 extra calories a day during that third trimester. And that's just really to support the proper growth and development as the infant as, um, as they get ready for birth. So you can very easily add that type of calories with nutrient dense foods. So that's really what we're what we're going to focus on too. It's a great opportunity to add things like fruits and vegetables, whole grains. I've got a whole list of things here that that we will um, discuss here in just a moment. But it's not difficult to add high quality foods with those extra calorie amounts that you need every day. So 
some of the very most important energy and nu nutrient um, recommendations during pregnancy include carbohydrates. This is not a time to be on a low-carb or keto diet because carbohydrates are so important for, for the growing baby. 175 grams of carbohydrate might sound a lot like a lot to some people, but that's, that's enough to kind of cover the, the basic needs um, for the fetal brain. Then protein, really the needs for protein are about 25 grams higher per day than what they were pre-pregnancy. So what does 25 grams um, look like? Well, that looks like about three and a half ounces of, of meat. So about the size of the palm of your hand, additional for meat, or it could be an extra hard boiled egg, or it could be an extra container of yogurt. There's all great protein sources that we'll also discuss further here in just a moment. Um, high protein supplements are generally discouraged because they may have some other additives to them that are that have not um, shown positive results during pregnancy. It's best to get your protein through real food sources rather than high protein supplements right now. Then there's essential fatty acids. So those are fa uh, fatty acids like omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids and they really help assist in the development of the fetal brain. So that's why we want to include those at this time as well. Uh, and then some other additional nutrient needs we have here. You may have heard of folate. That's a really big one. That's, um, we find that in our prenatal vitamins and a lot of our foods are fortified with folate, but the needs are higher during pregnancy because that plays such a huge role in the development of the neural system for babies. Um, vitamin B12, that also works with the folate enzyme. Uh, this is something that if you're if you choose a vegan lifestyle that you would need to supplement with B12 because um, it's only found in animal-based products. Iron, your needs during pregnancy are about 50% higher, up to 27 milligrams a day during pregnancy, and that just helps um, with the extra increased blood volume, both in mom and, and baby, to have the extra iron. Zinc, that's required for DNA and RNA synthesis. Vitamin D doesn't necessarily increase during pregnancy, but it does play a vital role in, in um, calcium absorption for the growing bones. And then calcium, those needs also don't increase during pregnancy, but it's important to make sure that you are getting um, the right amount, the 1,000 milligrams a day, just to help the calcification of, of the bones for the infant. Now I have a chart here that just kind of summarizes a lot of, of what we just talked about. You can see the green on there is the 100% daily value for non-pregnant women of childbearing age. The yellow is um, the needs during pregnancy. So some of those are a little higher than they are. Some are significantly higher, like the folate significantly higher, as is the iron. Um, during lactation, some of those are higher, some are lower. It just kind of depends on, um, on where you're at. With, um, with your nutrition and what you're eating and how that all falls into place. So some things are higher during pregnancy, some are higher during lactation. So how do you get these nutrients? Well, I've talked about nutrients. We don't just eat nutrients. We don't just go and, oh, I'm gonna eat some folic acid. Oh, I'm gonna go eat some vitamin D. You actually eat food. So that's really what I wanna focus on here is how do you get these nutrients in your diet from a practical standpoint? It's good to take the supplement, that's ab absolutely required and recommended, but we also need to make sure that the foods we're eating are rich in these nutrients as well. So I want you to think, what's on your plate? This is the basic guideline for what we use to educate people of all ages and stages of life, is a real simple message of the choose my plate. So does your own plate look like the my plate? And that means you have fruits and vegetables, grains, protein, and then don't forget the dairy off to the side. That's the very simple message of what you need to think about your own plate looking like. So we're gonna go through each of the different groups here on this plate to give you ideas of how you can meet your nutrition needs and have your plate um, strike a healthy balance. So the first one is dairy. Um, basically the healthiest components of dairy that we wanna focus on during pregnancy are calcium and potassium. Three to four servings a day is what's recommended. They're also great sources of protein and other essential nutrients, so dairy needs to be a, a part of your, of your diet right now. Um, what a serving would look like would be a small container of fat-free or low-fat yogurt, a cup of fat-free skim milk or low-fat 1% milk, or even a calcium-fortified soy milk, because I recognize that there are people out there that don't tolerate regular cow's milk, but soy milk is the closest in nutritional value 
to cow's milk compared to any of the other milk alternatives such as almond milk, rice milk, any of those just don't have the, the protein in them and sometimes not even the calcium added to them. And then reduced fat cheeses, so if you like a cheese stick for a snack or a thick slice of cheese or a serving of, of cheese if you cut it off of a, a block is about the size of your thumb, so that would be a good serving size to include as well. So three to four servings of dairy every day for some of those key nutrients. Then the next section on the plate is the grain section. So you see that up in the upper right hand. Grains are great because they contain fiber, they contain all the B vitamins. So when you hear thiamine and riboflavin, folate, those are all um, considered to be B vitamins. And then those grains also contain some essential minerals such as the iron, manganese, and selenium. During pregnancy, eight ounces a day is what's recommended to help meet your needs for nutrition. So one ounce equivalent of a grain would look like a slice of bread or a half cup of pasta or rice or a small tortilla or a dinner roll. Those are all examples of what a one ounce portion would look like every day. Uh, and so we also want to make sure that you're choosing more foods that have the whole grains as their first ingredient. So there's some symbols down there that can denote on a product if they do contain whole grains. So you might find those on certain packages of, of crackers or breads or cereals um, if they contain enough of the whole grains. So those are, those are the ones that you'll want to choose first during pregnancy. And that's because they contain more of those ingredients listed above from the fiber, vitamins, and minerals. So you can't go wrong with whole grains. So we say make at least half your grains whole grains. So of the eight ounces a day, at least four of those should be made from whole grain. And another one that I love that's not up there is popcorn. So snacking can be a really great option to meet your nutritional needs during this time. And popcorn's a whole grain. So that's, that can be a really good snack. Pair that with a string cheese or an apple and you've got a really balanced, well-rounded snack to, to give yourself that extra nutrition. The next group down there is the protein group. So six to eight ounces a day is what's recommended. So if you wanna think about what that looks like, the palm of your hand is about four ounces. So two of those a day would be what you'd have for meat, but it's not just about meat. Uh, we've got some other alternative protein sources there. Eggs are one of the best ways to get a high quality protein. One egg is equal to one ounce of meat. So that could be something that you include, whether you make scrambled eggs for breakfast or you have a hard boiled egg for lunch or a snack. Those are great ways to get that type of protein. A fourth of a cup of nuts or two tablespoons of peanut butter is equal to an ounce of protein. So a fourth of a cup of nuts is just a small handful. It's really easy to overdo and eat a larger serving of nuts. Um, and they do have a lot of positive qualities, but they're pretty dense in calories as well. Um, peanut butter, two tablespoons is about the size of two of your thumbs put together. So keeping your portion size in check will help kind of keep your calories within the level you want them to be. And then just one ounce of cooked meat is equal to an ounce of protein. So an ounce is similar to the size of, of your thumb. But we also don't want to forget other good protein sources like beans. Beans are a great way to get some extra iron, potassium, and fiber into your diet because they're a plant-based source of protein. So I like to find ways to add canned beans to almost anything that I make at home. If I'm making taco meat, I'll use a pound of ground meat and I'll add a can of black beans. And that's a great way to add in some of that plant-based protein. Uh, meats also provide a certain type of iron called heme iron, and that's the type of iron that's more readily absorbed. And since your iron needs are 50% higher during pregnancy, um, it's good to make sure that your diet contains some of the rich heme iron. Uh, plus those nuts and seeds have vitamin E, so that's another essential vitamin. And then we don't want to forget about seafood. Now here in this part of the country, it's not the most popular choice overall. You know, what's recommended is two servings of seafood a week. And in Nebraska, we average about two servings a month for most people. So, you know, whenever you have the chance, you can try to include a nice salmon filet or, or a few pieces of shrimp, and that will offer you some, some additional variety because really variety is key. And I could say that about every single category here with the My Plate um, because there's not one food or food group that's going to provide all the nutrients that you need. So variety is extremely important for meeting all those needs. The next group over is vegetables. So you want to make sure that you're including plenty of vegetables in your diet. There's lots of great ways that you can include them, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. Make 
those eating opportunities a great time to add some vegetables. Fresh, frozen, canned, or dried, it doesn't really matter. It, all forms matter is what we educate people with. Uh, we just want you to have more of them. So three cups a day is, is the equivalent of what we recommend. So you could have a nice salad for lunch. You could snack on some carrots in the afternoon and then have um, another vegetable with your evening meal and you would very easily meet your, your vegetable needs for the day. So not only are they a good source of fiber, but they also have vitamin A, there's vitamin C, there's potassium, all the key nutrients are found in vegetables. You know, sodium may be a, a thing to think about during pregnancy because some people have a tendency to retain a little extra water and sodium helps people retain more water. So choosing lower sodium, if you like canned vegetables, there's low sodium varieties of everything from green beans and corn to tomato products and, and spaghetti sauce. So you can't go wrong with vegetables. 90% of people don't get enough. So make sure that you're moving into the 10% that do. Then the last group on the plate is the fruit group. For a lot of people, this is their favorite between fruits and vegetables. And again, all forms matter, whether it's frozen, fresh, canned, or dried. All forms matter. Two cups a day is what we recommend. So between fruits and vegetables, so if you're more of a fruit person than a vegetable person, we want people to have about five cups of fruits and vegetables combined per day. So if you fall somewhere in between there, that's um, what we absolutely recommend between the two categories. So potassium is a really key nutrient, vitamins A and C, fiber. You really can't go wrong with choosing fruit. So what happens when eating more is a challenge? Because that's something that, that I recognize can be a problem for, for some people. You know, you, with those increased needs that we mentioned during pregnancy, whether it's 340 or 450 extra calories, depending on where you're at in your pregnancy, you need to make sure that you're making smart choices to get those extra calories. You also want to make sure that you have a variety of vibrant colors in your fruits and veggies because all those different colors are associated with key nutrients, vitamins and minerals and, and so forth. And so again, there's not one single fruit or vegetable that will meet all those needs. Variety is absolutely key. Then eat frequently. You know, some people find that they, they feel full a lot sooner than they did before. And so if you're a person that normally eats three meals a day, maybe eating, you know, three smaller meals and then three snacks can kind of help supplement your diet without you feeling extra full. And then those snacking opportunities are great chances for you to choose nutrient rich foods. So you can pair an apple with peanut butter or you can have hummus with some veggie sticks. There's all kinds of great ways that you can include nutrient rich foods and also still eat, eat frequently and stay within your calorie goals. Now there's some other things that happen during pregnancy. Um, some maternal discomforts that we recognize can include nausea, so it's just some basic tips on that. Try to arise slowly when you wake up if you experience nausea. Try dry toast or crackers as a way to kind of settle um, the stomach. Chewing gum or sucking on hard candies can also help with that. The small frequent meals is another good tip so that you're not eating too much at one time. Avoiding foods with offensive odors or things that just, you know, they used to always sound good or smell good to you and all of a sudden they don't, that's okay, that's normal. Just make sure that you avoid those to avoid the nausea. Um, you could drink some carbonated beverages instead of things that are more citrusy um, or, or carbonated to assist with the nausea. Constipation is another problem that can happen during pregnancy. So therefore eating those foods that are high in fiber, which we've all talked about already, the fruits, vegetables, whole grains, that can help alleviate the symptoms of constipation. Exercising regularly just to kind of keep things moving is also important. Keeping up on your hydration. So at least eight glasses of, of fluids a day can help with the hydration. Make sure that if, if you gotta go, you gotta go. You're pregnant, it's okay. Um, if your physician gives you okay for laxatives, if it's a big problem, then, um, then that would be the time to use those as well. Now heartburn is another problem that can happen um, pretty frequently throughout pregnancy. With this, you just want to make sure that you're relaxing, eating slowly. Don't be in a rush. Uh, make sure that you're chewing your food thoroughly so that it doesn't um, come back to surprise you. Again, those small frequent meals, we've heard that a few additional times here can assist. 
For some people, drinking liquid between their meals instead of with their meals can help with the heartburn. Because your stomach, you know, it's really, if you look at the size of your fist, that's about the size that your stomach is. So you want to make sure that um, you're not overextending by adding a lot of fluids. Um, you can drink between meals rather than with meals. Spicy or greasy foods sometimes don't settle well with heartburn. Um, make sure that you sit up while eating rather than reclining yourself back. Elevate um, your head while sleeping can also be a helpful tip. Um, waiting a few hours after you're done eating before lying down so that gravity can kind of do its job. Um, and then also waiting a couple hours after eating a meal before you would exercise kind of for those same reasons. So let's talk a little bit about exercise during pregnancy because for a lot of people this is kind of a missing missing part to, uh, to what we need to do to take care of ourselves. But really exercise can be an important part of your daily routine. You know, make it a commitment to yourself to, to, to get, get out and move your body. Lots of great benefits. It helps improve your circulation because that can be affected during pregnancy. It may help prevent varicose veins and help prevent excessive weight gain, so that's a positive. It can give you more energy because during pregnancy, people tend to be um, more tired, understandably so, but exercise can help with that. Um, it can help give you a better night's rest so people sleep better after they've exercised. It can improve your posture by keeping your muscles strengthened and decreasing back pain as well because that's common with pregnancy. So I would definitely talk to your, um, your doctor to just help determine what um, activity is is the most appropriate for you based on your activity level before pregnancy, your age, and, and so forth, just to make sure that you're, you're doing the, the right type of activity for you. Then here's just some do's and don'ts of activity. So you wanna make sure that you begin to exercise gradually if you haven't been exercising regularly. Also, you wanna to try to do it most, if not all days of the week, do something to move your body. You warm up with five or 10 minutes of something light and then 30 or more minutes of something more moderate. Um, so if you like to, to go for a walk, you could do just some simple stretching and maybe walk up and down your steps at home a, a few times to warm up before you go out and do a 30 minute walk around your neighborhood. And then cooling down with, with some extra stretching can be helpful too. And then just making sure that you're drinking enough water before, after, and during exercise and make sure that you're resting adequately as well. And then the don'ts, because some of us need to have some guidelines on, on what not to do to um, overexert ourselves. You wanna make sure that you don't exercise vigorously after long periods of inactivity. Like for example, if you haven't been able to be active, you wanna work your way into that activity level. You also wanna make sure that you don't exercise in hot, humid weather. And summertime around Nebraska, that can be difficult. So if you can get out a little earlier in the morning or go out later in the evening, uh, if you like to be outside to do your exercise, that's the best times for that. Um, don't exercise if you don't feel well. Um, don't exercise while lying on your back after the first trimester. Um, don't exercise if you have any pain, discomfort, or fatigue. You just really need to step back and listen to your body when it comes to what you should do for exercise. And then just make sure that you're not participating in activities that can um, harm that area of your body. All right, so if anyone has questions, you can certainly send those in to Facebook Live and we'll do our very best to get those answered for you. So I'm now gonna move on to nutri nutrition during breastfeeding because now that you've worked so hard for all these months to have a, a healthy, happy baby, and now it's time to feed our babies. So let's talk about nutrition for ourselves during breastfeeding. So there are some highlighted nutritional needs. You know, you have you have a higher need, as that chart early on showed, for certain key nutrients more so during breastfeeding than even during pregnancy. Here's what the extra calories look like for an adequate supply of milk. So for the, to support your growing baby, you need about 330 extra calories a day for the first six months. And then that goes up to about 400 calories a day um, after six months, because as baby gets bigger, their needs um, increase, and so your needs need to increase as well. 
So some of the highlighted needs include calcium. So both you and your baby need calcium for strong bones and teeth, so you need to make sure that that's still a key part of your diet. Um, vitamin D, that helps your body absorb that calcium. So um, you may need supplementation if you're not able to get enough of the sunshine vitamins certain times of the year. You can go outside and your body produces vitamin D certain times of the year. Um, at least in this part of the country, we, we don't have that opportunity. So supplementation may be necessary for vitamin D. And then protein, you need to make sure that you're meeting your own energy needs and preserving your muscle mass um, during this time. Doesn't mean you need a real high protein diet, but it's gonna be similar to what it was during pregnancy. Um, some other needs include DHA. You may have heard of DHA, that's an essential fatty acid that is good for the, the development of the nervous system. Breast milk contains DHA, um, but levels in breast milk are more if you get DHA in your diet. So, DHA may be something, or omega-3s in general, to, to work on supplementing during this time. Also, it can help play a role in preventing postpartum depression, so there's benefits for mom as well as baby with DHA. Zinc, you need 50% more zinc. Helps your immune system as well as your babies. So, for a lot of people, continue to take the prenatal vitamin throughout um, breastfeeding is, is really what helps meet needs like, like zinc. Then vitamin uh, B12, that helps your body release the energy and helps uh, the nervous system develop. So including um, a supplement for vitamin D may be important, again, especially if, if you follow a vegan lifestyle. Then choline, this is a, a nutrient that we're hearing more and more about recently that helps with brain development and cognition. And actually one of the best sources of choline in our diets are eggs. So it's okay to continue including eggs in your, in your diet um, during breastfeeding as well. And then continue to follow the my plate. So really the recommendations aren't a lot different during breastfeeding as they were during pregnancy. You want to make sure that you're filling in all the, the sections of the plate at each of your meals and getting at least two sections for snacks um, during the day. Now hydration, this is something that's also very important during breastfeeding because your fluid needs increase so that you can produce um, the the breast milk for your baby. Just some suggestions to make sure you're getting enough is to make sure that you drink a glass of water or another lower calorie beverage every time you breastfeed, sit down with a glass of water so that you have that next to you to drink. Limit certain beverages like soft drinks and fruit drinks just because they contain added sugars. They will hydrate you just fine, but if you're trying to maybe um, lose some of the extra baby pounds that weren't baby um, during pregnancy, added sugars, or something you'll want to work on eliminating. You also want to make sure that you have, take some caution if you have beverages with caffeine or, or alcohol in them. You can have a moderate amount, so that means two to three cups a day, because some people, especially if you're returning to work and, and, and life and all of that, um, that you may want to have two to three cups of coffee a day, and that should not affect baby. And so what does that mean? That means about 150 to 200 milligrams of caffeine a day tops. And if you notice baby's jittery because of that, then you may want to cut that back a little more. So for those of you wondering if you can get back to drinking an alcoholic drink once in a while, it can be a perfectly safe thing to do on a special occasion. Not something you'll want to do on an everyday basis if you're breastfeeding. Um, some moms find it good if they can express the breast milk first that they feed their baby later before they enjoy an alcoholic beverage. Um, but you want to make sure that you want to wait at least four hours after having a drink before you um, go ahead and, and continue with the breastfeeding. And then weight loss during breastfeeding, this is something extremely important because we remember on that very first chart where we saw where all the pounds come from. You're not going to give birth to a 30 pound baby. So there's some extra pounds that, that you may be interested in shedding once um, baby is born. But breastfeeding is actually a really great way to do that. It's great for moms and their babies. Uh, it can also help protect your baby against being sick. So it does help their immune system a lot, um, helping you lose the weight. Um, because you're using those extra calories to feed your infant. I mean, it should be actually quite gradual for the first six months after childbirth, and you can wait until after weaning your baby, baby to really start a true weight loss diet. Like if you want to restart a keto diet, or you want to restart a low-carb diet, or something else, um, you want to wait until after you've weaned baby from, from breastfeeding, just to make sure that you're giving them the adequate nutrients that they need. 
Women who breastfeed exclusively for more than three months tend to lose more weight than those who do not. Um, so it's very popular now for, for women to at least start breastfeeding. Maybe they do it for a month or two or three. Any amount of time that you do it is great. Just know that the longer you do it, the greater um, your, your own calorie needs will be and the greater your, your weight loss may be as well. Now what about supplements? Now we kind of mentioned the prenatal vitamin. Um, some breastfeeding women may need that vitamin and mineral supplement. And as far as that goes, you may just continue doing the same prenatal. And usually your, your doctor will have a recommendation as far as, um, as far as that goes. So you want to definitely make sure that you're talking to your doctor about supplements bef before you take one while you're breastfeeding. And not just a vitamin and mineral supplement, it could be any supplement. If you look in the supplement aisle of any store, you see hundreds of, of different items. Before you take anything like that, just run that past your doctor to make sure that it's compatible with breastfeeding. There's other medical conditions and allergies, and honestly, we could have a whole talk on this by itself, but if, but if you yourself experience things like diabetes, celiac disease, renal disease, any of those things, you'll have some special needs that just need to be altered a little bit, and that's where a dietitian like myself can come in um, and really be of help to, to assist you in choosing the right foods. Um, some people have other specific needs because of a food allergy. You know, if, if that's an issue, then we can certainly, um, a dietitian can help you determine some substitutions that would provide those nutrients. Um, if you're breastfeeding and your baby has a medical condition or a food allergy, you want to visit your doctor and follow um, their advice as far as about the choices that, that you can make as a breastfeeding mom to meet their needs as well as not um, irritate their allergy. And then, this is one of our favorite things to do, and if we were in person, I might have a batch of these baked up that you could try, but um, everybody loves cookies, right? I like cookies, I like chocolate. That's pretty normal for people. This recipe here is lactation dark chocolate oatmeal cookies, and it's a, it's a great um, recipe that you can have during pregnancy as well as um, during lactation, but there's all kinds of key nutrients in there, everything from whole wheat flour and peanut butter and chia seed and dark chocolate, of course. So this recipe is available here as part of this presentation. All right, so if anyone has questions, my contact information is here. We generally work with the pediatricians here at, um, at Boys Town. If anyone else has questions after this presentation, feel free to include those and I will do my very best to get those answered. All right, thank you everybody and hope you, you've learned a lot of great things today that you can take with you into the future. Good luck with baby. Thanks.